What's up guys, PKTCG here, and welcome back to another video on the channel. Today guys, we're going to be looking at Hizuian Gudra V-Star, which I personally believe is the most slept on uh, specialized deck in the format. Now, we've covered Gudra on the channel before, and if you guys really have been like kind of following the channel so far, you know that Gudra is probably my favorite way to play the Lost Zone engine, and probably will continue to be... Um, because it's just such a powerful deck, and it's um, kind of been under the radar. I mean, it did win EUIC Juniors. I believe it was EUIC. But I also, speaking of EUIC, added in a special spicy tech card that I saw after seeing Isaiah Bradner's Giratina V-Star list, which was adding in Banna EX with the other Banna, and we'll get to that in just a minute. But basically, Gudra V-Star is the tankiest Pokemon in the entire game because it allows you to use the Rolling Iron attack. First off, it has 270 HP, and it's Dragon type, so it has no weakness. Um, but it has the Rolling Iron attack for 200 damage, and during your opponent's next turn, this Pokemon takes 80 less damage from attacks. So that means that if your opponent trying you, tries to use like Lost Impact or like a, a hit with a big Burning Darkness, you're reducing that damage by a ton, and then you can kind of just uh, either, depending on how it goes, you can kind of just sit there and be like, okay, well, I'm gonna just tank another hit or i can use the moisture star v star power ability to be able to heal all damage from the gudra and then just completely um throw off your opponent and make it impossible for them to win so um uh, gudra is the tankiest deck in the format and yeah so we're going to be going through this sort of deck profile video today and kind of just break down why I currently believe that Gudra is the secret best deck in the format that nobody is talking about. So let's kind of break it down. Uh, this is a custom list, so there are a couple cards that you might be a little confused about, but we'll break it all down. Um, I will be a little bit more quick, go a little quicker on some of the more common cards that you see in a list like this. Uh, first off, we'll start with kind of just the other main spice, which is Banat EX with the um, Lost Zone Banat. Now, both of these serve different purposes. Obviously, Banat EX is going to be an attacker and also a disruption card. Uh, Banat EX can be a really good alternative start. Uh, if you go first, you can actually Banat EX and then just start spamming Everlasting Darkness. Uh, so that way your opponent can't use things like Rare Candy, they can't use Pokemon Search cards, and they're basically kind of stuck with a lot of dead cards in their hand. And then once you feel like you've gotten enough in their hand with Everlasting Darkness, you can Poltergeist them for a ton of damage, or depending on how the game goes, you can just kind of go a surprise Banna EX, and then you can Poltergeist if your opponent's trying to build up a giant hand, and you can Poltergeist for, to one-shot basically anything in the entire game. Um, it's a very powerful card that's been seeing a lot more play lately, and honestly, that really makes me happy because Banna is probably uh, my favorite EX card to come out of Scarlet and Violet base set, and I was really sad when it just wasn't able to work. Um, it wasn't initially able to work. Um, so also we are playing the single prize banner with the puppet offering ability, which basically allows you to once during your turn, you may put a supporter card from your discard pile into your hand. If you do, you put the banner and the shuppet that evolved from into the lost zone, which not only will boost your lost zone count by two, it will also get you back something like a Colrus's experiment, a Roxanne, or a boss's orders back from your discard pile and you can use it again which is incredibly powerful it really does fix a lot of those like we really weird scenarios maybe if you're kind of being uh hand disrupted a lot with iono and stuff uh then bannock can really get you out of um out of a pinch um it's definitely a really great way to safeguard your your play line or whatever and so it's just a very very powerful uh support tech um it does have the spooky shot for 50 which is not very important at all um but yeah um and then obviously we're playing shuppet we are playing the sorrel and violet shuppet because it does have the enveloping shadow attack which has a chance a 50 chance 50 percent chance of item locking your opponent which is just it, you don't want to start with shuppet but if you have to uh then you get a 50 percent chance of item locking your opponent which is also just pretty good overall um 
Then, of course, we are playing, this is a Lost Box deck, so we are playing uh, Comfy with the Flower Select ability, of course, as our main Lost Zone engine, and we get a whole bunch of cards in the Lost Zone with Flower Selecting. We've talked about Lost Box decks so much on the channel, I think it's probably the main archetype we've talked about here. So, I'll go I'll kind of speed run through this. If you want a more detailed explanation, then we'll... Um, then you are more than welcome to check out some of the other videos on my channel. Um, but yeah, we're just going to kind of speed run through this because we've talked about these cards so much on the channel before. Um, yeah, so uh, we are playing Cramorant because the Lost Revisions uh, ability allows us to use Spit Innocently for free. 110 for free is awesome in this current metagame. Uh, just also being able to get rid of annoying smaller Pokemon right away. Just super helpful, super useful. And yeah, I'm, Cramorant is just a great addition in um the game today um then we are also playing uh one copy of iron bundle iron bundle we've talked about before on the channel as well um hyper blower is just an incredibly powerful ability uh it can be really disruptive on your opponent since there's no more escape rope in the format hyper blower basically does the thing for you you can search it out with nest ball and artisan and then you can uh force your opponent to send something else up uh you can also keep it on your bench as sort of like a replaceable bench like a free bench slot uh, if you want to like fill up your bench or whatever so that way they can't your opponent can't do some weird stuff with your bench uh then you can go bundle and then you can just discard it and get yourself a free a new uh bench spot for free and then refrigerated stream is not really the best attack in the world but it is really disruptive against decks um like um like Char mainly Charizard EX, but it also has other uses against things like, I guess, Dialga. I'm trying to just think of like some certain decks that don't do well with uh, not being able to attack with their evolution Pokemon, but Un Iron Bundle is mainly just in here for Hyper Blower. Um, we are also playing one copy of Manaphy to prevent Radiant Greninjas, uh, and then speaking of Radiant Greninja, we are playing Radiant Greninja in here as our Radiant because it has a Concealed Cards ability, which uh, is just a really reliable draw engine. And then Moonlight Shuriken allows us to discard two energies and then do two, uh, 90 damage snipe onto two of our opponent's Pokemon. Very helpful, very useful. Um, and, then all, uh, and then we're playing one copy of Sableye in here uh, for the Lost Mine attack. We don't actually really use Sableye almost ever, um, but it's just there just in case. Uh, Lost Mine can be just a very devastating endgame attack, and since Sableye has kind of fallen off in popularity, we're only playing one. So, we are playing two Psychic Energies in here just because Sableye and uh, Banat EX can take advantage of those, and it's also an extra Mirage and energy. Um, but then the final card, uh, we do have a Hazooie and Gudra V, which is basically just a worse Hazooie and Gudra V star. Um, nothing really notable here. You're almost never going to attack with Gudra V. Uh, finally, I did forget that this is the other kind of special, specialized card for the Gudra, for Gudra specifically, and that is Zamazenta, uh, which has the Retaliate attack, which is the most notable thing about it. Uh, the Metal Shield ability is great, uh, it takes 30 less damage, 30 less damage from attacks, which can be really good if your opponent's trying to do some, like, chip damage. You can probably survive some of those chip damage attacks. It effectively gives it 160 HP, which is really good. Um, and then retaliate does 100 damage, and then if your opponent knocked out any of your any of your opponent any of your Pokemon, excuse me, uh, were knocked out during your opponent's last turn, you get to do 220 damage instead. And as you will see in today's video, um, this will come into play. Zamazenta will be a really powerful uh, card. And yes, this is being recorded after the video was recorded. I had to re-record it because something was messed up with my mic, and uh, apologies in advance because the microphone during the recordings of the games is a little bit, um, is a little bit loud. Um, I am doing my best in editing to fine tune it and stuff, but just a quick warning for headphone users specifically, just be mindful of your volume um, because it was a little bit bad it was just a problem with my microphone some setting was off um and then yeah that, that's basically it for the pokemon sorry for looking at having zamazenta stare into your soul for a little bit as i explained my microphone issues um but the rest of the deck pretty normal buddy poffin gets our comfies and our manaphies down uh counter catcher is great as a gust option especially if we're behind on prizes which usually we do get behind on prizes um in the early game since we do have to set up that gudra uh heavy ball allows us to get one of our one of attackers like Greninja, uh, Iron Bundle, Cramorant, Zamazenta, um, Sableye, and 
yeah, that's basically what it's in here for. Just those like one of attackers where you kind of just need to get out of the um, out of the prize cards. One copy of Lost Vacuum. Now, Lost Vacuum, I would like to play two, but I don't know what to replace. Um, but Vacuum is really good for getting rid of pesky tool cards that your opponent might have that you don't want, or just really good for kind of just boosting your Lost Zone, um, stuff like that. So. Um, we've talked about Vacuum so much on the channel. We've talked about all these cards so much on the channel. Mirage Gate is the main energy acceleration of the deck. We can uh, attach a whole bunch of energies with Mirage Gate and power up everything that we want, and then we can attack with everything we want. It's really great. Uh, Mirage Gate is a really broken uh, card, and it will continue to be until it rotates. Um, Nest Ball, we're playing three copies of Nest Ball. Um, which just allows us to search our deck for basics that aren't obtainable with Buddy Poffin, and that's like Greninja, Gudra... Uh, Bundle and Zamazenta, I believe, and Sableye and Cramorant. I just kind of went through all of them. So basically, everything that's not Comfy or Manaphy is what we're going to grab out with Nest Ball. Uh, Prime Catcher is our A spec. Um, just it's a powerful switch out, so you can use this as a switch, be able to use the Flower Select, then switch it out with Prime Catcher, and then also be able to gust up anything that you want. Uh, on your opponent's side and knock that out. Very helpful. Or you can just kind of stall at Prime Catcher too. We're playing two copies of Super Rod. That is the other card that I want to play three. I want to play three Super Rod. I'm only playing two. So it does become a little problematic, especially in the late game, if you're not paying attention to how many energies you're either lost zoning, attaching, or discarding. So just be mindful. Uh, you are only playing two Super Rods if you decide to play this deck. And it does create a little bit of an awkward scenario, especially if you, if you have to lost zone one. But I think it's okay. Uh, because once you get the Gudra in play, you're kind of just going to sit with that Gudra for almost the entire rest of the game. And it allows you gonna, to kind of figure out your game plan going forward. So it's not the end of the world if you don't have a ton of access to a ton of Super Rods. We are playing four copies of Switch rather than Switch Cart because our Gudras can get stuck in the active spot sometimes. And that's not good. And... Um, switch card is really important, that 30 damage is really important, but we're mainly just scared of getting that Gudra V-Star or that Banna EX trapped in the active spot and not being able to get it out. So Switch is the preferred card in here, and it's not really that big of a difference, and honestly not too big of a deal to worry about at all. Oh, uh, we were playing one copy of Ultra Ball, mainly it grabs any Pokemon, we do have to discard two cards from our hand, usually this is like a Buddy Poffin, plus another useless card later in the game, maybe like a Comfy, um, and this allows us to get our evolution Pokemon like our Banets or our Gudra V-Star, and uh, it's not really used for much else other than that. And also, if you're like in the later game, it, Ultra Ball is a perfectly fine card to Lost Zone, especially because you can you can draw into it. But Ultra Ball is just there to like say, hey, this is an alternative option if you do need to just directly search for an evolution. Um, we are playing Artisan as our Stadium card, and it basically just gets a gets us Bundle, Comfy, Manaphy. Uh, basically just so many different one prizers that we can just work with with Artisan. Uh, our opponent does get access to Artisan as well, which is kind of bad, but also it does allow for some really cool bait plays um, where your opponent might be like, oh, I can place this down, and then you can just Radiant Greninja or you can Sableye them and just like take advantage of those smaller Pokemon on their bench. Um, but it's kind of not always going to happen. So Artisan is a great, is a great stadium in here. Uh, for any Lost Box deck, but it does run into some downfalls with the fact that your opponent can play it. Uh, we are playing one copy of Boss's Orders, just as a straightforward Gust card. We talked about Boss a lot. Um, we are playing Colrus as our main Lost Zone engine. He gets us our... Basically, we want to just draw into a whole bunch of cards, and then Lost Zone the ones we don't want, and then fill up our Lost Zone, get cards in our hand. You know the deal by now. And then we are playing one copy of Roxanne because Roxanne is a really great disruption card, especially in Gudra. Um, if you're trying to like lock them down, tank it, tank hits, lock them down, you can go Roxanne. If your opponent has three or fewer prize cards remaining, they get two cards, which is just really not good for them, and you get six cards, which is really good for you. Uh, we are playing two. We are playing both Defiance tools in here, so we are playing Defiance Band, which is the more useful of the two. Um, Defiance Band allows us to do 30 more damage to your opponent's active Pokemon, which is really good because we can put this on our Gudra V-Stars and be able to knock stuff out like Iron Hands or um, Roaring Moon right away. Uh, also be able to knock things out like Chien Pao, um, which is just incredibly useful. It also does fix a little bit of math on a couple other Pokemon like Greninja, uh, not Greninja, 
Uh, I, I mean, it can work on Greninja, but on um, the Zamazenta and on Cramorant, it does help fix a couple, like, iffy sort of math things, which is just very helpful. Um, and then the other Defiance card we're playing is Defiance Vest, which allows us to, if we're behind on prizes, we take 40 less damage from attacks. Now, this is mainly used on our Gudra just to make it even tankier. Uh, you're taking 120 less damage effectively if you're able to use Rolling Iron, which is, like, there's no, almost zero ways for your opponent to one-shot or even get close to, like, KOing a Gudra with, after taking 120 less damage. Uh, it just makes Gudra a really huge tank, and it's really good. So, um, this can be used on, like, Bannet EX as well to prevent uh, other knockouts. Just kind of keep it a little bit more tanky since it only has 250 HP, which is a little bit on the lower end of the spectrum for two prizers nowadays, which is kind of crazy to think about. But uh, this can be a swappable card. You can put in something else maybe another super rod or another lost vacuum can go in instead of defiance vest but it does really matter when and like when it's there it does really matter and then finally we're bringing one copy of rescue board and we can put this onto our comb fees and basically just get a free retreat option if you guys remember um uh air balloon from back in the day this is basically just air balloon back again um, and yeah, and then obviously we're going on to our energies. We are playing one copy of Mist Energy just on the off chance that we are facing against Giratina or facing against Roaring Moon. Um, we can go ahead and slap on our Mist Energy onto our Gudra and make it completely immune to any sort of like disruptive attacks that, or anything like paralysis, any special conditions. We can avoid that with Mist Energy, which is just very helpful. It also prevents any sort of insta KO scenarios. And yeah, just you're gonna basically wanna keep your Gudra alive the entire time. And then finally, our energies. We are playing four copies of Metal Energies for our Zamazenta and our Gudras. And then we are playing Psychic for our uh, Banat EX and for Sableye. And then you're playing four copies of Water Energy for our Gudras our um, Radiant Greninja, and to an extent, we can also put it on our uh, Iron Bundle. But yeah, that is the whole deck here. Um, this is going to be um, a uh, less edited video. Um, I I'm trying, I'm experimenting a bit with um, edit, like kind of, because uh, I did make a video on my the Barrel Charizard, all right, the Barrel Charizard versus Pidgeot Charizard video, um, like, a week and a half ago or something like that, and it didn't do as well as I thought, and, uh, so I decided to kind of experiment a bit with, uh, like, hey, would people, are more people okay with just, like, the qua- not really, I don't want to say quantity over quality, um, but I, I guess that's kind of what it is, is just, do you want to, do people want to see more consistency over, like, less consistency with more highly edited videos, and I think we're just kind of, we're going to experiment with it, if you guys do want to see, like, more edits and more stuff, just let me know, um, because I really would like to be able to do that stuff, but I also recognize for my channel to be able to grow, I need to be able to make consistent content, and I think right now is just kind of the best way to keep the train rolling, and yeah, so we're going to hop into some games here with Gudra. It's a very powerful deck. Um, and yeah, you're going to see how powerful this deck is because it's just incredibly good. So again, apologies in advance for the microphone. I will do my best in editing to fix it. But yeah, let's just hop into some games and you're going to see what happens. It's going to be awesome. All right, heading into our first game here. Um, I actually tried recording a video before this, but there were some technical difficulties. Um, it was a game against Chien Pao. And we were able to basically steal back the entire game um, thanks to Gudra using Defiance Band in order to knock out their Chien Pao, and they just had no answers. So, hooray! Um, but we're heading into the first real game of the video. Um, I'm going to try and keep this video a bit more uh, lighthearted, especially if we try and if we run into any, like, uh, downfalls or something like that. We want to go second because it is a Lost Box focused deck. Um... But I do want to apologize for my Gardevoir video, my last video. It was not my best work. I'm not proud of it. Uh, I was not very positive at all in that video. And I just want to say, um, 
sorry for that and i will do better to improve Ooh, okay dialga they can ramp damage we just need to get the gudra set up faster than they can set up dialga which is nearly impossible <clears throat> and they just need a one shot comfy they have a Beldum to start and they have an energy all right well i would have preferred if they didn't have a Beldum. buddy buddy poffin is awesome we can go let's go buddy buddy poffin first should probably go get double comfy or should we just go get one Parting really just wants to get one because then one two gudra shup it yeah, let's just get one because let's look at the rest of the deck we have cramorant okay we have bundle bundle could be useful to kind of just make them waste an energy um not really too much we have three chorus box hands in hand we're missing a switch, we're missing a gate. Okay, all right, just one. One is all right. So let's go shop it later. Flower select. Ooh, we do have to lose a defiance vest, but that is a sacrifice I'm willing to make. Let's go chorus. So we definitely want to keep the Gudra V-Star and the energies, I think. Well, do we? Because we get an energy to attach and an energy to concealed cards. That's probably our best bet. And no, we don't want to look at Zama Zenta or shop it. I was clicking go back. Uh, yeah, that's fine. We don't need the Ultra Ball. Okay, so now what we do is Radiant Greninja. We'll go ahead and concealed cards first. And we're getting rid of the water energy. Another steel. Uh, we didn't really need that. We can attach retreat. go here just basically you're trying to weigh everything down Ooh, vacuum or energy I don't imagine them playing really any problematic stadiums Gudra Shepet I don't want to super rod back two energies um yeah we'll just pass there which is annoying that Kofi does have a metal type weakness but that's fine, I guess. Okay. They might just go... Nah, research. Okay, well... Colrus. Jeez, alright. Beldum. Probably a V-Star here. I would actually be shocked if there's no V-Star. If let's go Metal Coating, then... Uh, it's also equally not as good. Oh, we can Moonlight Shuriken two Beldums if we're able to. I don't know. It's huh. So they're playing. Th I think this would be like the one that you'd want to play, right? I uh, I don't know why you'd want to play this one. I guess just seventy HP, so you don't lose to Future Box as much. And then this one's just for set up setting up. Maybe a two two. Okay, that's I'm I'm kind of trying to learn Dialga a bit. That might be a deck that we cover. Uh, in the future but for now this is very interesting i think they're just going to go metal coating probably probably the greninja concealed cards nope just just metal coating okay so yeah this dialga is scary very scary and we draw into an energy which is not super helpful so i think we can go concealed cards first and we'll discard a water we just get another energy. Like, we can't keep drawing energies. Uh, we do get a switch, which is very nice. Um, we can flower select. A switch or a gate? I think gate is better here. Um, so we have five. We can... Uh, if we had a comfy... Uh, so let's switch into this comfy. Flower select. Switch or rescue board? Rescue board is probably probably better. I don't want to keep just like burning off switches, but that's kind of what we have to do. So just one away, which is very unfortunate. So I think what we do is we can go rescue board and we can probably put up like the Shuppet to just kind of sacrifice, I guess. 
rescue board and they can just attack the Shepet. Yeah, I guess. Not a great play by any means. But it is the really only play we have. And we are, I think, down a super rod. No, we're not. Okay. So we could afford to just slap back three energies. Yeah. One, two, and three. See, if we would have put down the other comp, we would have been fine. But yeah, not looking too great. <clears throat> we should have probably held the super rod as well. But in case of an Iono or something, then we just have energies available to us, I think. So, I think I just, just go Temporal Rupture, which is very possible, judging by like how awful their hand seems to be. Um, then we should be good. Another, so just they're getting all their Pokemon search cards, but like, they can only get so many. Yeah, like there is not much going on. Oh wow, okay, so they're just not drawing very much of anything. So the cool thing is, if we draw into Defiance Band, we actually can knock out this um, Dialga V-Star, or V, and then we basically just win after that. Um, we have Bundle too, which is nice. Um, do we ever, is there a world where we just kind of like risk a Concealed Cards? Oh wait, hold on, we have Zamazenta too. We can just Zamazenta Retaliate. Let's... Yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. Let's go here. Um, I can concealed cards this. Water energy. Yeah, we just knock out the Dialga. Okay, well, we didn't need to draw that. Uh, shoot. We need to just... Uh, mm, see, I want to get another Mirage Gate so I can power up my Gudra. But Sableye is... Mm, nah, we, just, we can just skip the Sableye line altogether. All right, let's go gate and see what we have. Okay, so that was definitely the correct play line. Because if we, we kept the energy here, gate. Oh, I should have grabbed the water. Whoops, <laughs> not the psychic. That's okay. Let's retreat into the Zamazenta. Uh, do I place down the bundle in case they try and stall? No. Let's just go retaliate. Knock out this Dialga V, and now they don't really have much to respond with. So we'll take two prizes. And now we're in a very good position. Yeah, we got Colress too. Their only attacker is gone. We can't counter catch her. Um, we do have boss and prime catcher still in the deck. Plus this Gudra is about to be powered up. Counter catcher, what? Oh no. Oh, okay, well. Gudra V, we don't really care about that. Let's go Chorus. See what we get. Oh, both Bannets. Well, Defiance Ban, Gate. I don't know, is there ever. Is there ever a world where Bannet EX actually comes into play here? Like, Bannet actually could be another attacker. Yeah, you know what? Let's do this. We can pop in. Oh, we should have. Ah, that was a bit of a misplay. Because I should have gone uh, bundle first. That's fine. We can just burn off a buddy buddy pop in, I guess. So let's go bundle. Yeah, that was definitely a misplay. My bad. Um, let's go hyper blower. Make them put up a Beldum. Probably one of these, because that one's like way less useful here. Because I can just attack with... Yeah, uh, I can just attack with... Uh, I could attack with Gudra, actually. If I wanted to, and then basically have a tank the rest of the game. Um, I could even Concealed Cards. No, because then we could risk drawing into the Energy rather than the Super Rod, and then we just... I guess, you know what, that's that's okay. That's okay. I would rather draw into the Super Rod, but let's see what we get here. Um, Metal. Yeah, Metal is not as useful as Psychic. Yeah. <laughs> and I say, we drew into the Energy, which is kind of what I expected. I think, let's see, Resource Management. One, two, three, three. Okay, so if I Gate, sick. There's still one left in the deck. 
Perfect. Okay. So if I would have actually not done that, I would have been okay, I think. But that's fine. Um... I don't know, because we actually could power this thing up. Yeah, let's just go Psychic. I don't see where we... Oh, we do have another Buddy Poffin. Okay, well... Okay, um... We just need one of our... That's fine. We just go in with Gudra. And yeah. So a lot of misplays, definitely. Um, but now we just basically win. Uh, I don't see a way for our opponent to get set up without us just kind of like disrupting them and basically getting to do whatever we want. I can just keep using Rolling Iron basically the rest of the game. Gujo just basically going to beat stick here. Search your deck for a card, shuffle your deck, and then put that card on top of it. Okay, well that's... Decent for them, but I think it's just too slow. Yeah, it's it's just way too slow. Opponent has to concede, and I and that oh, okay. Um I think it definitely yeah, our MVP definitely was uh Zamazenta being able to retaliate that uh Dialga V and just completely shut down their game. And then Gudra came in and was like, hey, here's um salt on the wound. You won't be able to uh um, you are not getting through this thing. It's over. <laughs> so, um, pretty good start. Um, I am actually in recording this, um, 2 and 0 with this, but you only see the first, uh, you only see that Dialga game so far. Uh, heading into our second game, let's choose Tails. I'm actually having a lot of fun with this deck. The, at the addition, I know we haven't really seen the Bannet hit the field that much. Like, actually, you haven't seen it. It, did make a difference last on the Chien Pao game, but it's it's actually pretty decent. Um, ooh, not a fan, not a fan of this hand. We don't even have a way to retreat. I guess we can just go to Cramorant. <sighs> See, if we started Comfy, that'd be great. What is this? Oh, Future Box this is not a good matchup for us at all. Cramorant is actually the best starting Pokemon for us, though. How do we beat Future Box? Shup it. Okay, well. Alright. Let's see what we can do. Sableye is not good. I think we literally just have to go Comfy. Oh, where'd I go Nest Ball for Comfy? I could have gone Nest Ball for, uh... Gudra. Um... Yeah, we'll do something like this here, and then, yeah, okay, well, we'll pass. We can't even do anything else. Well, this might be a quick and easy game for our opponent to win here, just because, uh, well, this is an abysmal start. They attach, they probably have a Techno Radar. Nope, oh, an Iono. Okay, Iono is actually really good. Not gonna lie, I really like the Iono. Because it does give us fresh new cards that we could actually benefit from using. So they're gonna. Are they, are they gonna go. Just double more Iodon? Just so they don't lose? Or are they gonna go bundle? Hmm. Nothing. Oh, wait a minute. I can actually win the game. No way. Can he... Not even gonna attach? What? I'm so confused right now. Okay, well, let's go... Radiant Greninja. Concealed cards the Psychic. Or, we could Concealed cards the Water. Actually, I'm gonna do that. Because we could just Poltergeist, if anything else. Well, I guess not. Okay, uh, we win. Cool, hooray, we did it. Call rest. Give me that. Give me this. Uh, give me that. Cool, hooray. Well, I feel very bad for my opponent. 
right? Oh, wait, no, I need one more switch out, right? Okay, we're not done yet. Flower selects. Two gate. Ooh, boy. We're just one card short, right? I guess we could just go, like, attach retreat. Yeah. If you are ever in a situation where you think you're going to win, uh, ban at EX. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Wish I would have been able to go ban it and just item lock him, but that's fine. No way we just whiffed it though. Um, Artisan, just like, let's, let's look at what's in here. Bundle doesn't do anything. Yeah, we'll just fail. We do want to put this into a ban at EX though. And then unfortunately we do have to pass, so we do give them one more chance to be able to do anything. If they just go peak acceleration again, we just win. Not hitting the other switch really does stink, but yeah. Our opponent definitely bricked. There is no way out for them, and hooray! Bannet, we won with Bannet EX on the field, so hooray! Um, let's try one more game. I want to see um, if we can get into a situation where Bannet actually is more useful than just kind of putting it there. Because we had two ways to win, which was Bannet or... Uh, Bannet would have been against basically anything else. Uh, if they placed down hands, that sort of stuff. And then Cramorant would have been able to take out the Maridon. Because uh, we could have just gone bundle up whatever, and then we could have just hit it with, uh, with the Bannet. So sometimes you don't even need Gudra for the deck to be good. Like the Banat line can be a great alternative, or you can just go single priced Lost Box with like your Sableye, your Radiant Greninja, and your Zamazenta. So our opponent is choosing to go first. Um, I don't really know many decks nowadays that choose to go first. Everyone kind of prefers to go second now because most decks either benefit from being able to attack first or they just... I don't know, what are they playing? Esperatha. Okay, well, that is a weird matchup, but I think... I think we actually can win the Esperatha matchup? I don't know. Oh my gosh, if we take out the Flittle, we're basically... We're basically good, right? Okay, so let's go Greninja. Let's go Buddy Buddy Poffin. We can put down two Comfies? Probably just one Comfy? I don't know, we... We messed this up last time, but I think that we're safe with this. Nest Ball. Um, Nest Ball for Cramorant seems pretty good. And then if we get, like, another Nest Ball... I don't know. Let's go Coal Rest first. Switch... Cool. Nest Ball. Energy switch. Yeah. So we do that. Now, do we want to thin? Yeah, we want to thin. Let's go get that bundle. Flower select. No, we go concealed cards before flower select. Okay, that's why. You don't want to lose those resources. Flower select. Switch, perfect. So now we can switch. Comfy. Flower select. Vacuum is pretty decent, actually. So that's four. I even could attach an energy to the Greninja. Yeah, let's do that. Hyper Blower. Force them to put up the Flittle. 
switch into the Cramorant, and now we just spit innocently, knock out the Flittle, and now they basically lose. <laughs> Not gonna lie. I mean, like, an Iona would be disruptive, but, I mean, I think we just have too much, too much stuff now. We did have to burn through three switches on that turn, so we do have to be mindful of that, but that's okay. Yep, there's the Iono that I expected. We still can get the Radiant Greninja play um, relatively easily. If we get like single prize Banet, no, we don't. We don't get a very good hand at all. Yeah, they're definitely trying to set up. Ooh, Fluttermane might be a bit of a problem. Yeah, they're definitely gonna try and go Fluttermane. And is it all basic Pokemon? Oh, your opponent's active Pokemon has no abilities. Nah, that's okay. We might just might not be able to attack for a turn. If we could potentially get our our bosses at the bottom, though. Well, if we really need to, we can just sit for a turn. Uh, Buddy Poffin, let's Heavy Ball first. Just kind of Heavy Ball. We could get a Gudra V. Uh, we did prize a coal rest and the rescue board. The rescue board getting lost is a little upsetting, but we can go get a Gudra V. That's fine. Uh, Buddy Poff into shuffle. Just shuffle the deck. Concealed cards. Okay, Mist Energy is pretty decent. Go something along the lines of this. And we can attach the Mist Energy, and then we can pass. So it's kind of the dumb Fluttermane. Fluttermane is a really annoying card against Lost Box, but it's not that big of a deal. Like, we don't have a good hand at all. Are they seriously going to try and... Oh my, you have to be kidding me. Of course they have a perfect research. Not to. Okay, what, what's the play here? What's the play? We still have the vacuum somewhere, so if we can just get the vacuum, that'd be great. Um, a Mirage Gate. We can't use that yet, though. So let's go V-Star. And we just have to pass again. Ugh. Only having four in the Lost Zone and not being able to do anything while this Flutter main just sits, like, rent-free in this active spot is just not helping us right now, so... What will our opponent be able to string together? They kind of... I don't know exactly what their game plan is. Maybe like Esperatha, Zatu, boss? Well, they got rid of a boss, so... There's the Esperatha. I don't exactly know what, what the plan is here. Okay, good to know. So the Gudra will need another energy. A double turbo. Are they seriously about to... Oh. Huh? Oh, because they have free retreat. Oh, Iono, thank you, thank you. I will take that, Iono. Thank you, thank you. So, yeah, okay. So they're definitely going to knock out this... Uh... Ooh, the Mimikyu's gone. They do get a Zatu. This does allow them to be able to use a Moonlight Shuriken, which is irritating. But I think we actually get the return KO, which is actually kind of crazy. A Rigid Band. So yeah, I think we do get return KO. The trouble is trying to knock everything else out. I would go after Double Comfy if I were them. Why do they do- oh, wait, that's not how double turbo works, though. Hold on. Oh, so they kept the double turbo. Huh, very weird. Okay. So we're behind on prizes now. Ooh, another Shuppet. So we even could go- there's a world where we could go Banet. So I think we go... Banet. We could go Colress. Banet EX, okay. Vacuum is pretty awesome. And then we could go Buddy Poffin, so that they can't do it again. 
And we don't want Artisan or Ultra Ball. Those are not helpful to us. So that brings us up to five, six. Okay, so we do get there if I do use Puppet Offering. So let's go Buddy Buddy Poffin. Oh, I don't even need to use Puppet Offering this turn. I can save it. So I think I go Buddy Buddy Poffin and just get the Manaphy on the bench. That so they can't do any more irritating plays like that. Um, this is two damage counters. Okay, well that still doesn't really matter too much. So I think we just go Vacuum away. Uh, see, like... Um, we could go another Comfy, and then actually I should have probably kept the Artisan, or the, the Ultra Ball was probably a better card to keep. But we could just go Comfy. And then we just vacuum away the Shuppet. Well, we're losing all the Shuppets and Bannets, so... Oh no, we don't even need to. We can even Super Rod it back later. Eh, that's fine. And we'll get rid of the League Headquarters. So now we have enough cards in our Lost Zone. We can go Mirage Gate on two. Onto our Gudra. Or, oh, one on the Gudra. Because we don't have... Hold on. We have a Water in hand, right? Oh, we do. Okay, we're good. That's all right. So this does make a threat of... Yeah, we're not going to risk it. We're just going to go here. Here, we're going to discard this Psychic Energy. And we're not even going to try to use... Yeah, so we're just going to Rolling Iron, take two prizes. So now they're definitely attacking with the Esperatha, but we do basically... Yeah, okay, cool. We do have another Energy. They shut off Moisture Star, but I don't exactly know what their game plan is going forward here. We can retreat or just re like get out of the active spot with anything. So they could ramp up the Cyball pretty easily pretty fast yeah they're gonna try but i just moisture star so 30 damn one two three four five six times three 180 we'll just moisture star yeah so we win the race against this esperafa what is the 30 less damage from attacks pow pad okay what are you grabbing back just the research okay fine with me because i do believe that i actually still win the Gu the gudra just carries yeah gudra just carries the rest of the game boss what manaphy don't exactly know what your plan is because now the Gudra just survives. Weird. Okay. Are they... I don't know. Are they trying to go for another Greninja play? I don't know. Maybe that's their only way out? Ooh. Defiance Vest. It's actually kind of crazy. Um. Well, let's see here. I can't attack unless I attach an energy. So I'm fine with that. 170, we do knock it out in two hits, and I don't even really need to use the bayonet, but it's probably smarter. Let's go Puppet Offering. Before we make any decisions, boom. Chorus. Super Rod Energy. Defiance Band. Probably is smart. Because this allows us to knock basically everything out. The Zamazenta is interesting, and I just don't think we'd ever have a chance to use it. I don't know, maybe I grab the Zamazenta rather than the Defiance Band? I don't know, if they go down on prizes though, uh, you know what, let's go get the Defiance Band. That's actually probably a better plan. We only, okay, we do have three energies in here, so I probably do want a Super Rod right now. 
We also could just like Sableye and help finish off the game with Sableye. Um, so let's go Super Rod. One, two, three. Um, Defiance Vest doesn't do anything. I think we just hold both of these. We could just go Rolling Iron and then just... Yeah. Go something like that. Yeah, Rolling Iron. So we take 80 less damage from attacks. We are tankier than they are. This Esperatha, basically the whole point of Esperatha is they're trying to be tanky. But we're just tankier. Like, they will deal their damage. Energy Retrieval. Wow, okay, that's a card you don't see every day in modern decks. Clairvoyant Sensor. They're definitely trying to attach to this other Esperatha. They're going to try and just go with the other Esperatha now. Um, which is fine. I'll just Moisture Star and do the same thing again. Depending on... Actually, it depends on how much damage you're actually doing. Because they're only doing 1, 2, 3, 4, 5... 150 minus 80, they're not even getting close to a knockout. And then I actually could just go, if I power up this Greninja enough. Okay, so they're just going to full commit to this one. Okay, so we both pl are playing the Bannet. Yeah, I, I knew that kind of with the Shuppet. But what do they get, boss? What do they get? Iono? I, I don't really know what's good for them to get. Okay, so they're going Puppet Offering. Do they just go Boss or something? What do they get? Iono? It doesn't show you. So they do, they do get an Iono. Are they going to use Iono? I don't really care about losing this hand, honestly. It's not that decent. It's just a whole bunch of cards. Yeah, it's a whole bunch of cards I can't use. Really. Realistically. I mean, the Psychic Energy was probably the best card in that hand. Gudra Mirage Gate Energy. Okay. Another Rigid Band. And Cyball. Okay. Well, yeah, I think we just win. I don't see a way for them to win. The Flutter Main um, also becomes just a little bit of a... A uh, little bit of an issue for them, I'd say. So we could go Concealed Cards, even. You know what? I actually think we should just hold the hand. Part of me just wants to hold the hand. The other part of me just is like, okay, no, you know what? Let's, if we can get the Sableye. No, we can't get the Sableye. Um, I don't really have an issue with anything else here. So we just rolling iron, take this knockout, and then we have our prime catcher in hand to be able to gust up anything and knock it out. So, and they cannot one shot this Gudra V-Star. So they're, this is basically game over. Um, we also do have another Mirage Gate. We should have probably used that in case of something like an Airy, but there's just, yeah, there's nothing they can do. They can just attach. Basically, their only win con was if they had, uh, yeah, their only win con was, like, basically disrupting me earlier in the game. Like, I really, I really did want to use <clears throat> the, where is it? Uh, it's not even here. It's in the deck. Uh, the Banat EX. It just, it didn't present, it. the offer didn't present itself. Um, we're not facing against really anything that, okay, another flittle. They, I think they just know that the game is basically over. So, yeah. Hey, look, they gave it their all. Um, definitely won't, I can't blame them. But yeah, this one, this one is over. And let's go Prime Catcher up there, Flittle, and we will take the last prize card. And yeah, GG to the Esperatha player, but uh, Gudra was just able to outplay them. And yeah, just showing off really everything that makes this deck super cool. Um, yeah, not going to waste their time or anything by doing extra actions. But yeah, you can see that Gudra is a great deck in this format, especially with the Banna engine being able to kind of safeguard you from a lot of really tricky scenarios. Um, I think that this deck is definitely not a deck. I'm, it's not a deck that I am considering for... Oh, look at that, level 22. Woohoo! Um, 
50 coins. All right. Sorry. Um, before I was so rudely interrupted by PTCG Live, um, Gudra is a very, really good deck. I still think I want to fine tune this a bit. Um, I don't think I'll be playing it at Indianapolis. Um, but it is a great deck, and I'm really excited to just keep experimenting with it. It's super fun. Um, definitely some card changes could be helpful. But overall, yeah, I'm just I'm gonna wrap it up there. Um, leave it on a high note. We won three games in a row. Technically four, um, but you guys won't see that first game that I played against the Chien Pao. But overall, this deck is really fun. It's really good. Um, it just has a lot of different answers to a lot of different things, and I definitely recommend that you try it out for yourself. So, yeah, that's going to wrap it up for this video. Uh, thank you all so much for watching. As always, God bless, have fun, we'll see you out there, and we'll see you next time. Thank you all so much for watching.